the next thing I want to cover is modes. Some lights come with just one mode, which is on off. Other lights have a high, a medium, a low, a flash, an SOS mode, and all kinds of crap. A lot of you guys are going to disagree here, but this is just my opinion. And I think that other than a high and a low mode, nothing else is necessary. If your light has a hundred different modes, you're more likely to be reading the instruction manual rather than having the light do what you need it to do. I can appreciate the usefulness of a high and a low mode in the same light because sometimes you need to light up the room and sometimes you just need to look at a map and you don't need 170 lumens to look at a map. As far as lights that come with a hundred different modes where you have a turbo mode and if you twist it you have a supernova mode and if you shove it up your ass a genie will come out that is unnecessary. I'm a big fan of the keep it simple stupid principle and I feel that the less modes that your light has the better. Specifically the modes that I find useless are the signaling modes. Lights that flash constantly or lights that are able to signal SOS I feel have no use in my loadout because I can accomplish the signaling task with a momentary switch. That is why I stated earlier that it's important you pick a light that has a momentary function. You can signal just fine with a momentary switch and you don't need a flashing mode. The only time I can think of that is useful to have a mode such as an SOS flash mode or other signaling mode is if you're out at sea and you're just going to have the light on constantly hoping it catches someone's attention. But I am not a seaman and uh, I have never in my life needed the light to flash for me. Um, I've always been able to accomplish what I need by just simply using the momentary switch. So I'm going to promote the keep it simple stupid principle here and uh, suggest that you go with as few modes as possible. However, I find that the high and low modes are useful. Bottom line is, don't buy into the marketing crap that these manufacturers are trying to sell you. An example of this would be the Maglite Mini. It has every mode known to man and for as many modes as it has, Maglite couldn't even manage to put a decent switch on this light to keep it from flickering on and off constantly. Alright, moving on to lumens, guys. Lumens are a measure of brightness in a flashlight. And there are, are flashlights out there that have an insane amount of lumens. They're just super bright. Keep in mind that the brighter the light is, the quicker it's going to drain your batteries, generally speaking. Anything over 90 lumens is good enough for a high powered mode and anything under 15 lumens is good enough for a low powered mode such as when you need to look at a map. I understand that there are other applications that require higher lumens and you're going to have to choose your light specific to your application just like any other tool. The important thing here is keep things in perspective. In my own personal experience I find a low powered light being used much more than a high powered light and that's because there are many more times a day where I have to look at a map or look at some paperwork light up the area where I'm walking or go take a leak in the middle of the night you don't want a thousand lumen light just to light up where you're walking because it's going to give away your position and it's going to ruin your night vision it takes approximately 45 minutes for your eyes to adjust to the darkness if you turn on a really bright light, then you ruin that and you have to wait another 45 minutes for your eyes to readjust. And this is where a red light or a red light filter comes in useful. If you flick on a red light, take a look at a map, you maintain your night vision. Alright guys, moving on. Let's talk about regulated versus non-regulated lights. And you're probably going, what does that even mean? I have a chart here that shows a non-regulated light. In this case, it happens to be a Maglite 3D battery. Here's 100% of the brightness. In a non-regulated light, as the battery depletes, so does the level of brightness. And it goes down considerably as the battery dies out. A regulated light has circuitry inside that keeps the light shining as bright as possible throughout the life of the battery. And here's a chart showing what that looks like. Here's a light 
that starts out with 100% brightness, dips in a little bit, but spends most of the battery's life shining at about the same brightness. Regulated lights tend to be a little bit more expensive, and that is something you're going to have to dig in the details to find usually. Some manufacturers list this on the packaging, many others do not. The Coleman lights here are unregulated and they seem to work okay as long as you don't mind that the light gets relatively dim near the end of the battery life. Just like when you're selecting any other tool, it's going to be up to you to decide whether or not you need a specific feature, such as regulation. It definitely is nice, but you're going to pay a little bit more. But there are companies that are making that technology more affordable, such as Phoenix. They produce some very good quality lights, and I highly recommend them. To sum things up here, guys. You want to start with the batteries, and I highly recommend that you choose a conventional battery that you can buy anywhere. There's nothing worse than having a light that you can't find a battery for when you need it. The second thing to look for is battery life, and battery life and lumens are usually stated on the packaging of whatever light you're looking at. The manufacturer will usually write how many lumens the light is and how long it will run at those lumens. Usually those ratings are a bit optimistic, but they're close enough for you to be able to judge whether or not you're getting what you need. Lumens, or the brightness of a flashlight, are application specific. Think about what you're going to be doing and select the light appropriately. You're going to have to decide whether regulation is for you or not. It is vitally important that you pick a good switch that is shrouded and not easily pressed by accident. and stay away from the marketing hype of all the different modes only pick the modes that you need and are going to use